Hello everyone, this is the latest LEGO Brick Built Porsche 911. Previously, this would have been considered to be in the Creator Expert line, but now they just do this black box thing, they call it 18 plus, and they don't have a specific theme for it. That's neither here nor there. This can be built in two ways, one at a time only. This is the turbo version. You can also build it as a non-turbo Targa. I will show you that conversion later on in the video, but I'll start with this. To start with, I want to quickly show you the exterior views from different angles, and then I'll dive into the smaller details and get up close, then return back to the overview to talk about it a little bit more and talk about the overall building experience. Just generally speaking, that building experience was fantastic. I was learning things. I was feeling a sense of discovery all throughout. There are a lot of really, really exceedingly tricky techniques that were used. Not so much tricky in the way that you have to assemble it yourself, but the design process <laughs> is, is truly next level. The designer of, of this set, the same one who did the most recent uh, Creator Expert line, brick-built car, the Mustang, and also did the Aston Martin. He's amazing, and he's just getting better. Believe me, I don't say that lightly either. Over the years, I have built and reviewed thousands of official LEGO sets, and I have criticized many, many, many design decisions, including some entire sets that I just did not like, giving me the reputation amongst some super fans of being too critical of LEGO's work. Spending so much time with so many sets from so many top designers, though, has gotten me used to just what is possible, what can be done within LEGO's constraints for production sets with the parts that are available at any given time. This, in my opinion, right now, at its intended scale and for what it's intended to be, is right at the pinnacle and probably pushed the bar up a couple notches. The front end, I think, is a good example of this, as you have studs on top construction, you have studs on front construction, studs upside down construction, studs on the side here, studs on the side here, angled stuff, more angled stuff, and it all comes together in a way that is pretty realistic, pretty accurate to the source material, and has minimal gaps. It also takes advantage of multiple relatively recent additions to the LEGO part catalog. The trunk has a printed logo. This air intake is actually open and the whole thing does lift up. However, inside, I'm not at all happy with these gaps along the side where you can see right through to the wheels and tires, as well as some unsightly colored pieces used underneath and as some of the foundational stuff, the red, the yellow, the tan, that's not good. The stock of each side view mirror is formed with a 3x3 specialized plate that was first introduced last year, which looks nice but doesn't allow you to adjust the angle of the mirror. The doors are two bricks thick and of course they open, but I'm personally more impressed by how they close because they are so tight around the edges with almost no gap. Let me not talk about the interior just yet, I'll wait for the Targa rebuild when it'll be much easier to see. The turbo version, meanwhile, has the wider wheel arches or fenders at the rear, which goes with the extended track width at the rear of the real car. And these five stud quarter round pieces are actually a new mold for this year. Another brand new mold, but far more specialized, is this back here. All that is one piece and it's mirrored on the other side. This is formed from a number of existing LEGO shapes, both in the positive and negative spaces. So for example, this under here, this curve will fit some existing ones, will you know, connect right up to it. Similarly, this cross section right at the end is a shape that we already had. This end shape down here as viewed from the top or from the bottom it will already connect to or, or go right up against some shapes that we've had previously, you know, some existing pieces, but to me personally, this whole thing just seems so, so specialized, although they will use it again in the future and it will probably one day become a, you know, a valued member of the Lego part inventory used by mock makers worldwide. This just feels too specialized to me, too un-Lego like. Again, there are two of this in the set mirrored left to right. Now, the greenhouse of this car, so everything above the shoulders, everything from the front of the windscreen down here at the base, all the way to the, the back of the, the deck lid, all that above this line here, is a thing of amazement to me. It did not make sense. It racked my brain. I, I don't understand how the designer was able to do 
so many different things at different points of the the build for this and not only the designer but also uh, the other designers who work together other people who work together on the team to ensure that this is an easy build you know that the assembly process is easy to follow and that instructions can be made for it that are easy for even a lay person who has no lego experience to just follow through using regular pieces without any special techniques without two people working together because this here is its own thing goes down into the the body a bit how it is angled here is not coincidental it is carefully planned and it is held in place very very securely this back here is done at a completely different angle and it's done at a completely different time and then at the end you put just this little bit of roof which is a very actually simple assembly here you just put that on and it fits absolutely perfectly with mathematical precision in there. This is a clip-based connection right here at this end. And then underneath here is a row of studs. How all of that, all of those things with such disparate builds were made to come together and fit together so darn near perfectly with just the tiniest bit of gap and no hesitation, no requirements to, to stress the parts at all, I believe that it is a fully legal Lego build from the perspective of no parts being stressed in any undue ways. It really boggled my mind. I could gush about this for quite a long time. I won't, I will force myself to move on, but I will encourage you, even if you're not interested in purchasing this set, if, you, if you're not interested in the subject matter that much, or if you think that it costs too much or something, at least look at the instructions just kind of, you know, download them online for free and just kind of page through it and pay attention to how different this is, how different this is, how they actually get put together, which is kind of astonishing on the inside with clip-based construction to get the exact angle. And just, uh, yeah, just kind of take that in and at least have that part of the experience for yourself. There are just two minor things that I can nitpick about here. First of all, that rearmost window section is obviously printed to get the little bit of corner detail, corner shaping. And that is not as opaque as it should be, as it needs to be to fully match to the Lego white. I believe the hue is also a little bit off. It's a little bit too blue compared to a more yellowish white color that's used for Lego's main ABS plastic. Also, if you can see through there, it's very difficult. But behind that window is the rear seat and it has a dark orange color for the main seat cover and behind it is a void there's just an open space where if you're looking at it in person with the right light you can see that void and it's just a well it's one of those things where if you see it you kind of can't unsee it and just one additional piece would have filled that in moving on to the rear the turbo tail looks pretty good i'm not sure if they were going specifically for the 3.0 or the 3.3 version of that but it looks like they may have hedged their bets a little bit with the thickness around the edge it could potentially be called either i think this looks more like the 3.3 myself which has the extended edges around it but it just looks good to me from most distances from most angles and then down lower the bumper clip and the lights row there looks pretty spot on to me probably some folks who hate lego stud pieces even though that's kind of the hallmark of lego will hate the fact that this shows some stud pieces here i'm personally fine with it lego company is generally fine with it but that is something that you know there will be some folks who simply won't like i like the use of prints for all the the important details there including these uh, uh the brake uh, lights which are one by two clear pieces with a little bit of red printing to still allow a little bit of pure clear to show through there for the reversing lights. They also have the appropriately small single exhaust coming off to one side, printed little turbo logo there in the center. And of course this opens up and there's some engine detail inside, including most importantly, the turbo. That's right. You get to build the turbo in the turbo. Just uh, it just felt good to get to that point in the instructions and to realize what was actually happening you know it's just one of those things it's a, a nice nod to to car fans and you know fans of this car in particular but just in general i'd say this is not the most elaborate uh engine compartment that's for sure you know it, it could have had more in it but 
I think it's enough, you know, it's, it's, it's above the bar for what was needed here. And finally, here's what the car looks like from an unrealistically low angle. So you can see a little bit of extra care went into shaping things back here to ensure that if you were to display this near eye level, you know, elevated up on a shelf or something, and it's facing away from you, you're still gonna be able to appreciate some nice shaping, some nice care that went into the sculpting of this. All right, the time has come for me to take part of this car apart and convert it from turbo to targa form. This is how they presented that choice in the instructions. The turbo version uses bags eight and nine, while the targa uses eight and 10. And they did make it fairly easy to convert back and forth between the two. I'm just gonna start pulling some of this stuff off that needs to be swapped out and you can see just how modular the design is now some of these things maybe should not have come out but they're going to be easy enough to put back because it's just whole assemblies that attach with with either clips or <laughs> stud based construction all this just comes off and then the engine which of course d does not need to have a turbo in it anymore and needs to look a little bit different even that just pops out that's its own assembly so here's the top section of it i was going to pull out the turbo itself with the exhaust and then i believe you have to change this up a little bit as well so that is its own thing there we go pop that out this will pop out and so oh, i think this comes out as well we'll start doing that full conversion there we go well i guess this is the best time to talk about the interior while i've got everything torn open maximally here this does have working steering that is connected to the front wheels and it's not too bulky it's not too complex i've found that some lego steering systems have just not felt right to me from a mechanical perspective as i put them together this did feel right it felt nice and and lean and it works just fine and it, it feels good to operate it as well maybe the steering wheel itself could have been a little bit larger maybe the 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 seats aren't scaled exactly properly they should have been a little bit larger but then you don't have quite enough space because of the the thick the thickness that was required for the doors but the the padding the shaping there looks nice the colors look very good with the medium nougat and the dark orange you got your e-brake emergency brake lever there which you could actually pull up the shift lever is down in there and that's able to be moved all around you can move it left to right and forward and back and it looks pretty good in there. You also have a little bit of texturing and coloring towards the inside of the door. So that works out. Uh, one thing that's not good here is that the rear seat looks like it has some actual leg room in the front. You know, a person who is scaled properly to this car would potentially be able to sit in the front seat or the rear seat. And that's not how it is at all. In 911s, you have to be a child to fit back there. This is much too much space. It's, it's completely unrealistic. I'll allow it though, but I did have to point that out. So this, is, this is not a front engine one. This is not a 944 or anything like that. <laughs> Good luck if you are not a contortionist or a baby fitting in that rear seat. It took about 25 minutes to convert the turbo into the Targa. I was not rushing at all. It was not a very involved process. I actually did not even need to take off the lower part of the engine. Uh, the, the block portion of it was able to stay untouched, but this was a pretty good transformation. It wasn't a, a simple thing. There were a lot of little details, I think, that were cared for, you know, that were taken care of that didn't absolutely need to be. So this was definitely not a minimum effort uh, job as far as the design was concerned. And there were quite a lot of pieces that were absolutely unique to either version. Uh, full bag worth, you know, really adds up, although you do reuse some pieces between the two, so you're not able to build everything for the two versions at the same time. Obviously, we've got this large open space here right now, and there is something that can optionally fill that space. I'll show you in a couple minutes. This bar, the roll bar as it is, replacing the B pillar is its own thing, as is the entire rear window, which is a curved piece, plastic in the real one also. Uh, polycarbonate, although Lego no longer uses polycarbonate for their clear pieces, but those were quite uh, quite a lot of extra pieces, you know, different pieces to, to make that. These are actually cylinder pieces, half cylinder pieces, so 
those curve in underneath, but it's not too obvious from the outside. The hips are gone. <laughs> that's, that's a little bit uh, traumatic for me taking that off. One of my favorite things about the, the design and the aesthetics of the, the 911 Turbo is how it has the, the fender flares back there. They're really good, but you know these are made to be the same, same width as the front, treated the same as the front, and even down at the base curving underneath the chassis is is filled in nicely you also have a change of wheels here of course you can use these wheels with the turbo version as well but it's the exact same mold just in a different color so you get two sets of the wheels only one set of tires however coming back the the rear deck lid is changed up a little bit obviously you no longer have the whole spoiler here people like to call it a wing it's technically a spoiler but you basically turn the top of that into most of the engine cover itself, swap out the turbo print for the Targa there, which is done nicely. And inside, uh, <laughs> inside we missed the turbo. We no longer have the turbo. That's <laughs> sad. It's very sad. It's much more empty in there and I feel much more empty inside. Therefore looking at it, but it's okay. I had to go for the realism. Swapped out the uh, the license plate for a Mike Siaki number three, major, no longer a creator expert, but you know car in this line number three from him. There's also one other that I will show you. One other option for uh, license plate, but this this is fairly slick and fairly smooth. How that all went together and you know replaces what's inside. There was one quirk I will. I will say there was one quirk that I wasn't too happy about. Uh, it did not seem to be my problem, but look for a pinned comment in just in case it was again, a pinned comment. You don't have to post up uh, your own, but I had to move the rear seat or at least the upright portion of it forward by one stud for clearance. And it does seem like it was designed to, to be done. It was very easy and it looks like the pieces were designed to be easily lifted off and shifted, but that was not covered in the instructions. Now, speaking of cover, the roof is exactly where it's supposed to be, exactly where it would be in the real car. It's here in the front, in the trunk, or the boot. And that is one assembly. It's going to be my first time putting this on, but it's supposed to clip right in to a couple of black clips on the roll bar. So, and then just settle right down. And that's that. It's not as good of a look, if I may say so myself. Not as, not as ideal, not as, as perfect, uh, not as believable, not as realistic to me personally as the turbo one. I wish it was a little bit, a little bit wider and the front of it, the way the front of it sits doesn't sit well with me. Yeah, not my favorite, but from a distance, it looks pretty right from, you know, a t fairly typical angle. I think when you get right there, that does not look good. You see that little bit right there. It's just too thin. Good effort, but it's probably my least favorite thing on this whole model. This is what an extra bag worth of pieces looks like. So these are all pieces that were used for the turbo version and not by the Targa. There's a similar number uh, in reverse. There are actually more pieces used in the turbo, if I'm not mistaken, uh, except for these. These are your true leftovers, your true extras. And also there's this one additional license plate option for Japan. That's the sets number down there at the base. And the top has a reference to a region of Japan that has some really nice driving roads. So I paid $150 US for this. Same price as the Mustang, same price as the Aston Martin DB5. Why then does this box have thumb tabs on it? I'm supposed to destroy the box to get into this thing. I've never seen such a thing before. <laughs> I don't care about boxes that much, but this definitely tripped me up. I, uh, I sliced through mine to get it open, but I hope they don't start doing thumb tabs on more sets. They, they should do that on little uh, $10 sets maybe, but uh, a collector's item should not have that. So let's talk about that price then and uh, value. Given that it's the same price as the Mustang and the Aston Martin, it's about the same size. 
And this has that whole additional bag of pieces to convert it into something else. On balance, relatively speaking, the price here is expected, I would say. It still feels like a lot to me. $150 still feels like a lot for a big chunk of plastic. It is a big chunk of plastic though. And if you have this in person, you're, you're able to grab it, hold it, you feel there's a lot of substance there. This is not a hollow thing. It has a bunch of hollow spaces, but it also has a lot of, a lot of mass to supplement its volume. And I'll tell you what, <sighs> the more I look at this Targa version, the more I like it. And that's shocking to me, given the fact that I don't like the 911 Targa, Targas in person, especially older ones. That's a trip. <laughs> I really like the lines on this thing. Hmm. It's clean. It's smooth. I guess that's all just part of what comes back to this being one of my favorite Lego things ever. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not lying. I've been through so many, so many Lego sets and few have come close to this in the building experience, in the joy of the building experience, the surprise, the genuine surprise of the building experience, the awe that I experienced while putting this together. It's a, it, again, it's, it's just a design master class. Even if you don't love how it looks in, as a finished product, I think it looks really good as a finished product, as a display model, but it's the build. It's all about the, the build and how these major, major sub assemblies were designed to fit together so perfectly. And they're so far apart in, in the build and in the process. And yet it's all still easy to put together. It's really special. It truly, truly is. And I'm torn right now because I like this version enough that I'm actually considering keeping it in this version and not switching it immediately back to turbo form. It's like my gut wants me to go back to the turbo form because I like the shape of that car in real life. But another part of me says, no, leave it like this. Just soak this in for a while. Evolve. <laughs> because of this model, I may actually start to like the 911 Targa a little bit. Interesting, unexpected. So this isn't perfect. Um, I mentioned previously uh, on the turbo version, the, the little corner issue with the, the print not matching up in terms of its color and also the, uh, the rear seat being able to see through it, having that hollow space. You can actually see that hollow space more easily in the Targa form. So I will, I will repeat that mention that that should have been filled up. It takes just a couple more pieces. Mm. Yeah, I mean, four if you're going to do it separately, but a very small number of pieces to fill that in and you don't see that. I also did not call out throughout the entire review video here, uh, color differences in the white. Uh, I think my color reproduction on camera and into the final videos is pretty good these days. So you should have been able to see, uh, basically if, if you would notice the color variations in the white in person, you should be able to have seen them and noticed them in the video throughout. There are little variations and it's just the typical stuff from Lego that is really not acceptable. They really need to fix. They need to get significantly better at. They should be able to have consistency in their ABS. Like if there's any one thing that Lego should do well, no, two things that Lego should do well. One, color consistency. Two, fit consistency. Things should consistently connect to each other. They're pretty good on fit. They're very good on fit, but color, not nearly as good as they should be, and especially for something like this, that is a collector's, you know, more collector market oriented thing. I, ju I just can't excuse that. I'm, I'm trying to think of like, what, what? Nope, nope, nope. Uh, I should not be able to see that, that one by one tile right there. And that one, those are darker and more yellow than the rest. I should not have been able to see that on the turbos roof had a number of pieces lined up that are identical. Half of them were slightly darker and slightly more yellow on a brand new set. The other thing that I will uh, call out here 
is that these windshields with the new plastic material that's not polycarbonate, they do scuff up and scratch up much more easily than the old. That's that's a given. That's a that's a known thing. However, for a collector model like this, a collector oriented product like this, this should not be tossing a couple of those together in a bag and shipping it out. They really need to start individually wrapping these large, very special pieces, you know, these these valuable pieces that mean so much and that can show scuffs so readily. Uh, some of the small surface scuffs on this are actually from the tires that were also in that bag. So it was one bag had the two big windscreen pieces, the front and then the turbo's rear window, and then the tires, and that's it. And that was too much. <laughs> the tires actually scuffed these a little bit, and then they they scratched each other slightly. Um, and they, they, they need to stop that, period. I can understand for cheaper sets, um, smaller pieces, they're not protecting them. Uh, it, would be, it would be good if they could improve their materials again uh, at, at some point in the not too distant future so that they're not using polycarbonate, which runs afoul of, of increasing uh, regulations due to the toxicity of the, the manufacturing uh, process, but they, they need to get more hardness back because uh, this, is, this is not really good enough. And especially with these bigger things and with the more expensive sets and things that are trying to be display models with big pieces, it's, it's, it doesn't feel good to get something like that. And more and more people are, are calling that out, rightly so. So if you encounter that problem, you should call it out as well. Let, Logo, let Lego know, let the public know that that's not cool to get this beautiful model that designers put, I don't know how many hundreds of man hours into, did excellent work. And then you get it, you build it, spend your hours. It's a wonderful process and you go to display it and forever, you're just gonna be seeing a whole bunch of scuffs there. Uh, my build process was recorded. However, unfortunately, sorry, this time I don't have a pure build for you and I don't have a speed build. I have a live build. You can go back and see that it's on my streams, cha uh, streams playlist on this channel right here. Uh, it was a live build, so it took longer than normal and has a bunch of chat in it. Not the best experience, I think, for just following just a build. So I, I would recommend that you rely on other channels for the build for this one in particular, but I will continue to do my normal builds for most sets going forward. I hope that this was enjoyable for you, or at least informative. It was a fantastic experience for me. Like I said, I'm gonna hold on to this model, certainly, long-term, put it next to my smaller scaled F40, uh, and debate continually whether to leave it like this to help open my mind to something different, something that I've not liked in the past, the 911 Targa, because this model looks so good, or switch it over to turbo and just kind of go with my, with my gut on that. I'm leaning towards the former at this point, but thank you for, for watching and uh, I will bring you more videos very soon. So I'll talk to you then. Bye.